So today, finish up science, and Lord willing, we're going to move on then to Satanism and the occult. Now that being said, we'll get as far as we can, and if we want to spend a little bit more time on Scientology, we will do that. But I shared last week, and I know a couple of you weren't here, but the plan for class is going to be that we will have class after this week, one, two, three, four more weeks. We will finish up on June the 11th, and as we finish up, we want to get through Scientology and New Age beliefs, Satanism and the occult, and then I'd like to get through Islam for sure, and we'll see where we're at there at the end. That being said, some of you have said, hey, there's other religions that we could study here, and I'm with you on that. Church calendar-wise, it's not going to work right now to be able to do more. I mean, I'm thinking now, I could have done this over a year. But um, one thing I'm going to be considering is next steps then, maybe later in the year. It's going to depend on how some things fall with the capital campaign and those kind of things. But the week after we conclude is Vacation Bible School, so it's my busiest time of the year there. And then we've got summer projects going on. And as Pastor Scott's been sharing, he's going on a sabbatical for two months a planned sabbatical for their June and July, so I'm going to have some extra responsibilities then. So, that being said, the time for us to conclude then is June the 11th, working on what other classes we'll be meeting. Paul right across the hall, he'll definitely continue to meet throughout the summer. We'll probably put him in this room because there will be some other folks around there, but we'll see what other classes are available then. But just uh, an FYI on that. And I would like to continue to teach these things later. So we'll look at that for maybe fall or early part of next year. Probably early part of next year as we're looking at it. But we'll see where the Lord is there and, and, and how he works. There's going to be a point where, as we shared last week, uh, if Lord willing Russ Martin were to get in, uh, uh, voted into pastor of discipleship, then he would be overseeing the adult classes. So then it may be scheduling with some of those things too. So we'll figure it out later, but we've got four more weeks. So jumping into week one of four there, let's review a little bit from last week regarding uh, Scientology. We said last week that 12 million Americans are considered active participants in the New Age movement. And Scientology being a very secretive religion, it's hard to know exactly where they're at with their numbers in their religion. They go all over the place with it. What we can say is that it is a religion that's heavily based on celebrity influence. Religion that down on. But it's hard to tell what those exact numbers are. And it's also estimated that Another 30 million U.S. citizens are avidly interested in some type of New Age movement idea. And again, that's very broad there. But as we talk about New Age religions and New Age ideas, we're going to focus our time on looking at Scientology, as that's one of the larger New Age religions there. Now, some assess that if everyone who are interested in New Age religions would come together and create one large religion. It would be the third largest religious denomination in America. So these are very popular ideas. They're just scattered in a bunch of smaller belief systems there. We talked about there not being a Church of Scientology here in Delaware, but there is one on Dublin Road in Columbus that was built in 2019. That's roughly the Um, give or take our new addition there. We showed some pictures of it, and it is a beautiful structure that we talked about the architecture being very state-of-the-art, very new age. Uh, It reminds me of, I think of like the first time uh, I was ever in like an Apple store when they had like all the, you know, that was the first store that you went into that had that type of architecture and was built like that and you was looked like that. I think the same thing of a Church of Scientology. Um, It's very state-of-the-art, it's very uh, modern, and it's very, you could tell they they spent a lot of money putting this building and this space together. And this is the auditing center that we're going to be spending a lot of our time talking about, where they basically have the main part of their religion on display. 
We talked also that there is there are two other Scientology churches or missions not too far from us in the state of Ohio. In Florence, Kentucky, there is the uh, Church of Scientology of Cincinnati, and in uh, Cleveland, they are doing a church or a mission of Scientology, which a mission is basically their um, their church plant. And so, as you look at Scientology, it's largely focused then on large urban areas, on cities, or close by to cities. There, they say that in each of them that they offer their basic religious New Age services to members and to general public, and also that they're open seven days a week. We said that Scientology was founded by L. Ron Hubbard, Lafayette, Ronald Hubbard. We talked about his history, and as we saw with many of the other false gospel preaching, teaching founders, there was a history of some issues there, issues with the law, issues with followers, issues with folks who um, were living in the areas that he was living at during that time and, and found some issues with the religion. He was a prolific writer. He authored over 200 novels, but his most popular book then was Dianetics, was the modern science of mental health, which is the key book for this religion, and it sold over 3 million copies. Their literature states that Dianetics marked a turning point in human history as it provided the first workable approach to solving the problems of the mind. So this is a religion that solves the problems of the mind. And if we were to describe it to someone who doesn't know anything about it, think New Age science and psychology blended together. It basically try to describe it to them. L. Ron Hubbard started the religion and now the current leader of the religion is a man named David Miskovich, who much like L. Ron Hubbard, there's a lot of questions about him. Uh, he was number two in the line of the religion prior to L. Ron's death. But recently he was served 27 times by a lawyer for a human trafficking lawsuit, but he couldn't be found. They finally eventually found him in Tampa, but he was basically in seclusion. And there are stories of his wife having not been seen in public since 2007. So there's some drama there. And if you go online and you were to look up Scientology, you would often see scandals associated with the religion. So some interesting things there about it. Now, as we jump in then to today to the main doctrine of Scientology then, I want to go just beginning with the current the commonly used Scientology terms um, that we're going to be looking at. And we'll talk through each of these. This will help just kind of serve as a review a little bit, because we talked a little bit about some of the doctrine, and we'll review that. But it will also kind of fill in the gaps for what we haven't looked at so far. And these will be on the handout that you'll get at the end of our time together. But when we look at Scientology, we first see that the most commonly used phrase is that we have analytical minds. And this speaks to the conscious, the rational, and the problem-solving part of our mind. And in order to get our mind to where it needs to be, there's this thing called auditing. Now, auditing happens on those tables that we saw, and these are Scientology's personal counseling, and it's the main focus of their religion there. They use what they call Dianetic techniques, and utilize an e-meter for reading engrams. We'll talk about those in a second. When it comes to auditing then, they say that this is Scientology's personal counseling using dietic techniques from the book that L. Ron wrote and utilizing an e-meter for reading e-grams. An auditor then is the person who conducts the auditing session. And so you will go through a counseling session there and they are going to try to bring a apart past traumas in your life. Now, they also study reincarnation, as we talked about. So this could be traumas from lives past that you don't fully understand or realize. What's the ultimate purpose of this? It's enlightenment, because we are all have a divine state. So we said in some ways, it's like Hinduism, in that there is a continual form of reincarnation until you eventually reach enlightenment. With that then, a person's 
ultimate goal is to come to the state of the clear, or that is the person who has completed the auditing sessions. This person is supposedly liberated from all engrams, from all problems of their minds, and the ill effects of mind and body. The method of doing this is Dianetics, and it was developed by L. Ron Hubbard. And interestingly, depending on what you see on their history there, um, I was talking to some of you last week, and you were saying, there, there's some history that says, and the religion's not going to tell you this, but as L. Ron wrote this, he was kind of blending science fiction and psychology and these things, and he didn't really intend for it to become this big thing that it did. That's what some think on it. But then he capitalized on it with these different practices. The E-meter then is called the electropsychometer, or E-meter, and it was an inv instrument invented by L. Ron for utilization in the auditing process. We'll show you a couple pictures of that and how it works here in just a little bit. But an engram then is the unconscious mental image recorded in the reactive mind that has negative effects on the person's life. And this is the thing that they're trying to eliminate all of. All of the bad images in your mind. So last week we watched a video of the Church of Scientology that they produced that almost kind of made it look like a health spa. Right, You go in, you receive this, uh, these counseling sessions, these readings, and then as you do that, what happens is you, much like going to the gym, you're cleared, you feel better, and you're gaining strength, and you're gaining where you need to go until you reach your ultimate destination. Now, one of the acronyms that you will see is MEST, and that's what they say that we are in, which is matter and space and time which can pose the physical universe and hold the Thetan captive. So our issue is one of the fall, but the fall is that we were no longer aware of our enlightened status, that we fell into matter, that we fell into this world around us as we talked about. And so again, we see shades of Hinduism in that, because in Hinduism we said that everyone was a divine status but then they fell into their own ignorance. It's very similar here. The pre-clear, then, is a person undergoing Dianetics, auditing, progressing towards the clear, or this is a person who is, it's like their version of progressive sanctification, right? They're getting better, and they're getting better, and they're uh, becoming clearer and clearer, so it's a person who's very serious about the religion of Dianetics. A couple others. When they say a Thetan, a Thetan is what we all are, or it is our immortal human soul or spiritual being. It is the true timeless identity of the individual. So we are Thetans. We are not humans. We are Thetans. And we have reenact or reactive minds, or this is the part of the mind, not under a person's rational, conscious control or awareness. Again, this is from uh, the resource that you'll get at the end of our time from the North American Mission Board apologetics page on it, that we've been using a lot of their resources. But that being said, that's kind of an overview. Let's talk one-on-one -on -one through the different beliefs there. If you have questions, comments, feel free to raise your hand and I'll be glad to call on you for them. Uh, Scientology claims, though, that there is no enforced belief. So when we watched that video last week, they said, what, basically, you know, what's right for you? What's truth for you? And so, it all takes parts of the postmodern society that we live in, where it's your truth is whatever you want to make it. Now, there are areas of the religion that you have to do to really be a part of it, like the counseling sessions. But your belief in God, your belief in truth, partially is based on whatever you want it to be. Now, interestingly, with that, you can often see reports, different things in the religion of those who have left and talked about the strong authority structure there, too. So, you see these beliefs here, but then you also see how they're acting those out in reality, and it's not always the same together. Some of their literature says in Scientology, you learn to think for yourself. It is a voyage of self-discovery, focusing on only the things that you find to be true. 
And so this could be an attractive religion because it's self-help, it's focused on what you want to be true, and it's focused on the idea that I'm a god, I, I am perfect, I have this ultimate deity status that I just need to be able to unlock. They say that man's true identity then is a Thetan, that immortal and divine spirit, and that we are not limited by our own body and ego as we think we are. We are Thetans whose fundamental nature is good and is godlike. These are things that we're going to focus on when we talk about how do I address these people? How do I talk to them? They would say then that man is not morally fallen. He is simply ignorant of his own perfection. That we are all perfect in our, uh, in our ultimate being, but we just have to be able to get there. So not only is it reincarnation, but it's also works-based salvation. They are working their way towards the divine state. And people, then, are composed of three dimensions. We, are, we have souls. That's our Thetan part. We have a mind, an accumulation of all our past experiences in this life and in past lives. And we have bodies, the mortal, temporary, physical component. So if you want to make a religion where you can make a whole lot of money in, here's what you tell people. You tell them that you have a mind that has an accumulation of experiences, not only here in this life, but in past lives. And how do you get past those experiences? You continue to pay money towards our counseling services. And you can continue to twist and manipulate that to be able to continue to get more and more and more from these people, as this religion does. They say that man's only fall was into matter and not into sin, and this fall happened trillions of years ago, long before anything that we know existed. So while we find ourselves as young earth creationists, they find themselves as like old, old, old universe trillions of years ago. And again, you see where their author for this religion blends a lot of science, a lot of, uh, science fiction with religion, with psychology, with Hinduism, with postmodern ideas, with New Age ideas, it all kind of blends together here. This is from Richard Abaines from Cult's New Religious Movements in Your Family. We read this quickly last week, but I wanted to come back to it here because I thought it was helpful for us as we review and continue to work through this. It said, trillions of years ago, long before anything we know it existed, there were countless immortal beings Known as an effort to rid themselves of the doldrums, they decided to collectively create the universe and everything in it. So stop there. God is not the creator in the universe, who is immortal beings who were just bored. They were bored and they wanted to create a universe to keep themselves company, to keep themselves busy. And their hope was to have a realm which to play the game of life. We shared last week that game of life we see in Hinduism and Buddhism, right? Where they talk about the endless cycles of reincarnation and to pass the time. But the Thetans soon faced a problem of which they had not planned. As spiritual beings, they could not function within their physical creation. The Thetans solved this dilemma by building bodies for themselves, the human for being only form, that should say, being only one of many different appearances. So with that then, you could also say that we could take on, that gods could take on other appearances other than human forms as well, depending on where your truth is. So basically they say that they were caught up in their own trap as they became entranced with their creation, losing awareness of their true identity. Now, since that time, Thetans have returned to life after life through reincarnation, inhabiting different bodies, and in each body there are those engrams, those sensory impressions stored in their minds that cause various emotional and physical symptoms. So why do we have chronic pain? Well, it's not, it's not hereditary, it's not based on your genes, it's not based on past injuries or things like that, it's based on past lives. And you can rid yourself of these, as well as all of your problems, and eventually you can rid yourself of death by going through this process of Scientology. 
because then they would say that if a person, let's say that you're a person who just has really bad physical makeup and you end up very paralyzed and crippled, well, the problem is the way that you've lived in these past lives and you need to be able to rid yourself from these. In a sense, I hadn't really thought about it here, but this is in many ways kind of like prosperity gospel teachers in a sense, where give me your money for this and it's going to be able to take care of these needs as well. Now, a person will be reincarnated many times over thousands of years, and this continues on over the process of time. And so, again, we said auditing includes clearing engrams from previous lives that they have. Any mental disorder, not only physical, but mental disorder you have is due to engrams from your previous life. Your behaviors and ways of thinking are based life and you act and behave the way that you do based off your past lives. So the responsibility there that you have in and of yourself and the, the things that you do, the behaviors that you have are based on how you've lived in your previous lives. So there's also a sense very similar to Hinduism of karma, of what goes around comes around. Now again, we can become clear of these through auditing. So they would say that L. Ron Hubbard was the god of their religion and that he uncovered man's true nature and devised a solution to the problem through Dianetics. As he did this then, they said that engrams can be discovered through auditing, they can be neutralized, and this can be then done by, we said, an auditor, a counselor who applies Scientology technology to another individual. So if you were employed as a clergy member in the Church of Scientology, this is what you'd be doing. You'd be helping people find out more about their religion, sharing resources with them, and then you would be talking to them in these counseling sessions, working them through these things. We talked about their Sunday services. They do have, uh, we saw like a meeting room where they met, but that's not a main part of their religion. It talks about the good things in Scientology, it talks about some of their curriculum that they're going through, but the main thing are these counseling sessions. They say that through this process, engrams can be exposed and erased so that a person becomes clear. And they say that this is like clearing the numbers of a calculator so you're back at zero. You are back at your divine state. The process of this then involves the auditor asking an exact set of questions questions are asked, they can manipulate them in a certain way to help them find out about things about themselves, not only in this life, but in past lives as well. And so they're saying that they can improve your condition from this, but as any similar test, there's layers to it that it's like, wait a second, you can manipulate that uh, any way you want it there, and they are trained to be able to help people in this way. They say that with the meter, that e-meter, it helps the auditor locate areas of spiritual distress, the electrocycle meter or the e-meter. Now, L. Ron Hubbard said that the meter tells you what the mind is doing so that when an emotional charge comes on, one knows exactly where to clear the engram. So you're in these auditing sessions, and I'm talking about past lives and something registers then that counselor can share with you, this is what you need to clear. So then you do your best to absolve your mind of that type of thinking and get in that enlightened state. Now this is a picture of an e-meter. We'll show you another one uh, in a Scientology video here in a couple minutes. But with this, there are handles that you hold on to and they look kind of like um, just metal tubes, and you hold on to them, and then they go through this auditing process where over here it's going to show the different areas of fall, of set, of rise, or of test, and that's basically showing you where you are. If it goes to fall, that's a part of the fall, right? If it goes to rise, then you're rising above these things. So, 
the system that they have. And with that, they say once an area of charge is found, the auditor can give them the directions needed to assist in examining the engram. And so that's where then they go to their other literature. And so as we were looking at um, last week, the video that showed us inside the Church of Scientology, it showed us just these huge walls. I mean, I think of like this entire hallway wall and then some that was full of all the different books that L. Ron wrote or that other people in the religion were writing. And so they have a stack of resources then that they can give to you of this is where you go to find more information about this. And then you pay for this class or you do this over here and you pay for this. And again, it's trying to be able to, uh, as much as they can, you know, continue to give people, they would say, the help that they need, but also charge them for this religion. Salvation, then, is ultimately attained through increasing one's spiritual awareness and getting into the clear. As one's spiritual awareness increases through auditing, so does the ability for the individual to determine his solutions about life. So it's very much a self-empowerment, individualized um, process where you are finding your own way towards being a deity. This is again from Ron Rhodes, Challenge of the Cults and New Religions. He says, this then is salvation in the religion of Scientology. Salvation is attained through increasing one's spiritual awareness, and a person's spiritual awareness increases through auditing, so does his ability to determine his own answers and solutions about life. Moreover, the initiate can, through auditing, come to recognize his true identity as a thetan, an immortal spirit that is separate from the messed body. That's matter, energy, space, and time body. He can also discover how to control the messed universe around him by the power of the mind. So not only can you get better, but you can control matter around you through the power of your mind. Since the material universe is really nothing more than a mental projection of the Thetans, it stands to reason that this universe can be controlled by the mental power of an enlightened Thetan. This then is salvation in the religion of Scientology. Well, you know what I did? I actually made that smaller there. So, uh, here we go. In addition to the auditing process whereby one can supposedly become clear, one can participate in many training courses offered by Scientology. Though one becomes free through auditing, this state of freedom must be supplemented by information regarding how to remain free. So not only is it to get to that enlightened state, but you've got to remain there because you can't get past all the matter here on this earth. Now there's a part of me that thinks to myself, okay, if I'm a deity and I created this world, how did I then, in my perfect status, fall into these problems of matter, of energy here on this earth and of these things. But not only then, as a deity, do I have to get myself out of that, but I have to continue to remain free. So you see how they continue to manipulate this to keep getting resources out of you. The variety of available Scientology courses range from introductory, teaching basic principles, to more advanced ones that train professional auditors, including courses that can take one through the, quote, eight dynamics of life. Self, creativity, group survival, species, life forms, physical universe, spiritual dynamics, and a supreme being. Now, interestingly, they never define that spiritual being. And so there may be a Scientologist that says that they believe in a divine God, but most of them are not going to put any meat on that bone. Alongside that, many of them view the eight dynamics of life as the ultimate. What's the ultimate dynamic of life? Myself. Right? My personal enlightenment, my creativity, group survival, moralism, species, life forms, physical universe, spiritual dynamics. A 1990 Los Angeles Times article on Scientology estimated that to go from the initial free test to the operating Thetan level 8 costs between $200,000 and $400,000. Now that being said, my guess is that number has significantly rised as everything else in the world has rise, right? With that as well, 
Other publications have noted that an auditing session may cost as much as $1,000 per hour to go through this. So with that, again, why do we often see celebrities, pop culture icons embracing this? They really like pushing that these people are members of their religions. Why? Because they give a lot of money towards it. Tom Cruise is probably the most popular and well-paid um, ac action star in the world, right? And he is known as the number two under David Miscovich in this religion. And what's part of that? Well, he can afford these different auditing sessions and different things, right? So then, again, they say that the universe is nothing more than a mental projection. So we rise above these things, but it's a mental projection. Ultimately, it's matter, it's space, and we can control through the mental power of an enlightened fate into the world around us. Now, I want to show you this because I think it's very interesting in how this is packaged and how it's marketed compared to the way that we just talked about it. So I want to show you a video. This is again from the Scientology. So it's their marketed, put out their video. And I'd like to see what you guys think about this compared to what we talked about. And you will see like their version, their picture of an auditing session going on as we look at this. So there's the auditing. And here you can see where he's got the uh, things, and they're just having their conversation. She's asking questions, reading the meter, and then he's talking through that. Then, as we talked about, then they have resources that they give you. Let's find it. Here's the. Uh, this is their board that talks about how you can free their awareness chart. But here you can see their material guides chart. So they have a large amount of resources that is going to give you the basically whatever you're dealing with, whatever those readings are showing you. Then you can take a class, you can read a book, you can do something that's going to be able to help you get where you need to go. And I believe the one that we last was even larger than this chart like it, that we looked at. And what did you notice in that video? How did it look a little bit differently packaged than what we were talking about? And why would someone find that attractive as a religion? Rob? It's just um, it's people feeling like they have some kind of control. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I determine based on the amount that I put in, based on the work that I do, how far I'm going to go in this religion. Good. Wendy? You brought up, um, like they made the person feel vulnerable as a member mm -hmm. of felt. Yeah. You know, Rem you remember that tragic it? thing in your life when you were a kid? Yeah. You can be clear of that, well, right? So those past traumas, they don't have to be there. They can be cleared, right? And if you don't clear them, well, then you don't either have enough faith or you're not giving enough, you're not supporting enough. It's good. Shelly? It, they mentioned something about a defined series of actions that mm -hmm. laid out path. Like it made it seem very like, oh, we know exactly where we're going. Right. Exactly where we're going. But it seems like it would never end. Exactly. Like, mm -hmm. Based on what you told us, it right. seems like well, it's a defined series of actions, but here's the other thing with it. Now, we always, you know, everyone has their own struggles with it, but from a biblical perspective, like, we see there's just things that we don't do, right? There's commands, there's laws, there's this is how we do it. It can change for Scientologists all the time, you know. Your prescription for how you deal with these things in mind is completely different from what based on what you view as your truth. Good. Yep, Marvin? Getting ahead mm -hmm. what you're going to share, but as far as the salvation, at the end of the day, when they say you can reach clear, it sounds like they can reach clear. So when they right. get enough money, get enough these sessions, and then they have to go to it to be considered to be free. But do they, does that stop the chain of reincarnation? Or 
mm -hmm. clear in this life and then it starts all over. From, from what I understand, it's ultimate enlightenment. You are freed from it like L. Ron Hubbard is. But they said that L. Ron is continuing to do work like in the stratosphere. But he's freed from his earthly body. So we go on forever, but we're freed from our earthly bodies. To become more of the immortal being, mm -hmm. untrapped by the mess. deity. Yeah, we're out of the mess. That's right. The mess. The mess. <laughs> Matter, energy, space, and time, I believe it was. So I have a question. Yep. There's there's physical death. There, is, they there do you death. you do die physically, okay. but you're reincarnated in another form. So that's interesting. I haven't read anything on funerals for them. I would assume that you know it's probably up to the individual. Um, yep, Meg. Is this is this considered a cult or a religion? Like, do they actually have the same like tax status? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're 501c3, yep. Because this almost seems like it's more, um, like, you know, with the counseling and all of that, that it's... Yeah, like a self-help business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, they do. Okay. They are a 501c3 tax-exempt organization. Are they excommunicated if they leave? Or is it just whatever you want? So... I would say it's, are, you, are they excommunicated? The more that I read, and I actually watched a documentary on the higher-ups, it's very authoritative. Like, David Miscovich is viewed as the god. And then if you're higher up in there, you're basically shunned if you're out of there. Or made fun of. Uh, they will go to you in public places, and why are you doing these things? And they actually have, um, they actually have, not like, went after physically or things, but tried to stop people who have tried to write documentaries or things against them. Um, we talked about Leah Remney being one of the um, actresses who was in the religion and spoke out against it. She's received threats or different things from them, lawsuits. Scientology is a religion with a lot of money at their higher up levels. Uh, generally the ones that are really involved in the religion have a lot of resources, so they go after people like that. But the, again, they say that God can be interpreted however one wants, but neither Jesus nor Buddha were operating thetans. They were a shade above the clear. Okay, so there's the clear, and then you can continue to be above that. And I would say, ultimately, they would say El Ron's at the top. And we saw back at earlier in, we saw that, um, that room. It looked like a Sunday school room for them. El Ron's picture was there, just as you would often see you know, you used to go to churches and see pictures of uh, Jesus being there. Al Ron was there. No clear definition of the nature and person of God is found in the religion. We are all deities, so there doesn't need to be one supreme God overall. So that thing be, so those things being said, let's talk then about how do we reach people in these uh, religions. So in the back there. If you guys wouldn't mind passing those out, if you ladies wouldn't mind. Um, this is an article that um, the first, part of, the, uh, the first uh, part of this is the North American Mission Board article that we shared a little bit on here. On um, It had the different terms and just some good key points for Scientology. And we're going to talk about that and we're going to talk about New Age religions. And on the back there is what I wrote up of areas to focus on. So when it comes to, if I'm talking to someone that's either a Scientologist or they're involved in a New Age religion, where do I go from there? Like, what do I say to them? What do I, how can I challenge them? Uh, what do I do there? And so I've put four main points that I would share with these folks that I would encourage you to consider. And there's, if you have other thoughts, Feel free to share them as well. The first thing that I would do is I would talk to them about the reality that our ultimate problem is our sin nature. Our ultimate problem is not that we're thinking wrong about our deistic state. We don't have a deistic state, right? We have a sin nature, and the Bible shares with us that all have, fall, fall, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. 
And then you can go in and talk to them about how there is one God, how there is one truth, how we are created for his glory with a purpose. And so I would focus, first of all, on the fact that we are not all divine. We are in need of a Savior. Psalm 51, 5, Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and sin did my mother conceive me. I was born into this sin. And we can talk then about the actual fall. We can talk about God's testimony and his gift of grace in our life, how he's changed us and conformed us in the image of his Son. We can talk through Romans 6.23 that the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life. And then I would really make hay then on Jesus being God's son, came to earth and died a death that he didn't deserve to pay our sin debt. And as we talk about our sin debt with these people, we can talk to them about the fact that we are freed from this constant work that they feel like they have to do. It's not about how much money you give towards your religion. It's not about these constant auditing sessions. It's not about going there and attending services and self-help classes. It's about a personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ. And I've shared there several verses, John 3, 16 through 18, 336, um, 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from our unrighteousness. But much like we saw with Hinduism, we focus on, no, there's one God. Our ultimate problem is our sin nature, not having a divine state. But we can make hay with them as well in the fact that we will live on forever somewhere. But it's not going to be in reincarnation, it's going to be in heaven or hell. I put these in order of what I would prioritize. The third thing that I would prioritize, and it is important with it, is that we are given one earthly body, yet we have an eternal soul. But with that, the Bible says it's appointed to man once to die, and then the judgment. So there is a spiritual death um, that we have. And as we look at this then, we're going to be judged, and we're going to be either in heaven with God forever, or we're going to be in hell, separated from him forever. So we're given one earthly body, and we have an eternal God, creator of all things, and has created us to have a relationship with him. And I think that as from a logical perspective, this is going to make more sense to a person than there were these... There were these Thetans that were up here, and they just got bored, and they wanted to have the wheel of life and time, and they just got sucked down in these things. Our religion makes more sense and doesn't have the scandals, the controversies, the whatever from its founders that yours does. So let's talk through these things. There's plenty of scandals within Christianity, but not from Jesus, right? And then we can continue from there to, I mean, there's, there's always the, the points of you want to share your personal testimony. You want to be able to talk to the person about where they are in these things. And really, they are living out your faith. I'm going to, like this, I'm going to focus, number one, on our ultimate problem being a self-problem of sin, not wrong thinking. And then, let me tell you about my God. Let me tell you about who Jesus Christ is. Let me tell you about his life-saving message. Other thoughts on Scientology, on New Age thinking, on um, what I just shared there, areas of folk to focus on, or anything else? Rob. Mm -hmm. People just so often will say, well, that's true for you. What makes you think you have a corner on the truth? Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I like to say is, well, what, you know, like, okay, the Bible's true. Now, whether you believe that or not doesn't, doesn't really have any bearing on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I can say that uh, I don't believe in gravity, but it still applies to me. Yeah. You know, so here's the Bible. You might not believe Mm -hmm. So, but do you have anything else to uh, to start off with to combat the uh, people that think there's all these different truths 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, one thing that I like to talk through is just how we got the Bible in a very simple way, because you get too far into bibliology and people's eyes glaze over. But if you say, you know, the Bible was written by 40 different men, or more than that, in different cultures at different times, you know, and it's all one unified, perfect, coherent book. And over 2,000 years, it stood the test of time. God continues to use it. Uh, people continue to proclaim it, to live for it, to die for it. And from a real perspective, they're like, yeah, people have challenged it in areas, but there's not this, you know, sense of these things are wrong, these things are untrue. It's never been challenged in a way that's found that's legitimate. So I like to focus on those things and just say to the person, hey, you're from, you know, say it's somebody you work with, hey, you're from Marysville, Ohio, and I live in Delaware, Ohio. If we were telling of the same story of something, we're going to tell it from different, or different perspectives and might have different facts, and that's just from those areas. Take out the thousands of miles and the time span between some of these authors, and yet it perfectly comes together, and I believe this is true, and I base my life on that, and that's completely countercultural to today's world, which is truth is whatever you want to make of it, right? So I like to go back to, I believe this to be the authority, and it's been proven not only through time, but in its inspiration is one area I'd go to. Marvin? Mm -hmm. what they think they're doing or gathering from this new age of Scientology or whatever it may be, but then you can, over the course of time, help them maybe see if they keep falling the same trap or you know, that type of thing. Like, they may not be working for you. Mm -hmm. Talk to them about why, why that might be. Yeah. So a person who is going to be involved in a religion like this is probably very interested in self-help. So, you know, we're going to go to the gym, we're going to do these things, whatever. Build that relationship. I'll be your gym buddy. I'll be whatever. And get those inroads then and to be able to talk to them about these things. Right? And they're going to see you and how you live your life and the way that God's working through you. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, He can change them. It's good. Anything else? All right. Well, now we will... Uh, we will go to uh, Satanism and the occult next week. And so as we look at that, much like Scientology, we're going to focus on the religion of Satanism. We'll keep it PG, I promise you that. But we will be focusing on that. And then from that, we will be talking about other things in the occult, which is very broad, but much like we see from Scientology and New Age ideas. There's a group that worships a like official religion, and then there's a whole bunch of people that are dabbling in this stuff, right? So we're going to talk about religion, but then, okay, I know someone that's focusing on a, or that's having fun with Ouija boards and different things that they shouldn't be messing with. How do I talk to them about these things? We'll go through that. From there, we'll go to Islam, and then we'll see what we have time for after that. So let's look to the Lord in prayer together. Thank you again, Lord, for this time together today. Lord, we thank you that your salvation is a salvation, that it's not based on giving a bunch of money to the church. It's not based on uh, doing a bunch of auditing sessions. But, Lord, it's based on salvation by grace through faith, based on Jesus Christ's finished work on the cross for us. Lord, that finished work has changed us. It's given us new life. It's given us redemption. And we are so thankful for that gift. Lord, I pray that you would help each of us to live our lives each day in light of that fact and in light of that truth, and that it would change in every way to be conformed more in the image of your Son. Lord, as we consider what we've studied today, I pray that you would help us to be both encouraged and burdened to be able to share our faith with others. And Lord, that uh, you would draw people out of this false religion of Scientology 
into the true religion that's found in a relationship with Jesus Christ. As we look to the service ahead, we thank you for Pastor Scott sharing from it with your word, uh, from your word through the book of Acts. Lord, we pray that you would use it in our hearts and lives again to encourage us to uh, work in our hearts and lives, and Lord, that you would be honored and glorified in our time. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.